Good evening. Welcome to this evening's devotions. Our sincerest condolences go out to everyone who has lost a loved one, lost property, and lost things around them that they dearly loved. This is Holy Week. Holy Week. The word holy conjures up a feeling of reverence, piety, hallowedness, sacredness, sanctification. What a pity we only experience it like this for a week. Already I have let the fact that we get in staff on a Monday and a prearranged appointment yesterday impact on my life and thus have missed out on taking this week more seriously. I hope to face the rest of this week with more reflection, more consideration and more meditation, worthy of what Jesus did for me so long ago. The Gospels are like four cameras that have captured parts of Jesus' life. They have all depicted both similar and different parts of who he was and what he accomplished. Matthew portrayed him as a teacher. Mark saw him as a man of action who came to serve and suffer. Luke stresses the importance of salvation. Luke highlights healing, compassion for the needy and his grace. John revered him as the Son of God and highlighted the things that God had revealed. Let's take time to ponder on all the parables, teachings and relationships Jesus had with all those whom he encountered on his journey. I wonder how he felt towards the end, saying goodbye to the closest and dearest disciples whom he had shared so much with, sharing the Last Supper with them. He tried to tell them of the pending events that would impact all their lives forevermore. Imagine facing what God had asked of him. The pain of the pending crucifixion. The denial of his friends and the confidants whom he had spent so much time with. They never supported him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus betrayed him and Peter denied and disowned him. There was conflict between the Jews. The disciples ran away and questioned the resurrection. But Jesus stood resolute. He barely buckled. He didn't even try to defend his honour or engage in conversations to justify his actions, offer plausible arguments and explanations to anyone to save his life and to prevent the horror. He resolutely stayed the course took one on the chin for us. How can I respond? How can I respond to the magnitude of this? I can put on appropriate garments. We wear a gown on graduation day, a white robe on christening day, white garments for the Catholic First Communion, ball gowns for matric dances and black for funerals. I'm thinking of putting on symbolic garments this week to signify how grateful I am. To represent the respect for the one who made me. Colossians 3.12 urges us to, as God's chosen people, to become holy and dearly loved. To clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. How many of you have watched America or Britain's Got Talent and seen those women who make those quick changes in outfits? We need to don our spiritual garments to become renewed and to signify and acknowledge God's glory. That first garment is compassion and kindness. Jesus did not turn a blind eye to suffering. May we take note, intervene and walk alongside others where necessary.
and be that shining light to those who suffer or are bereaved or are unhappy. It's a hard, cold world out there, and many may need a little kindness. Humility, gentleness and patience is a little more difficult and probably requires a little more practice. We might only wear these garments on a Sunday. True humility loves obscurity, dreads applause, esteems the virtue of others, pardons injury and fears the luster of those virtues which are admired by men. Patience with wild drivers and fractious children a willingness to take advice. Bear with each other and forgive each other is next. Maybe this coat is a little tight. Maybe it's a pure wool jersey and it's a tad scratchy. Perhaps you might see this garment as gloomy. Forgiving someone else is life-changing. The tight coat will become the beautiful mint green linen comfortable dress if you get it right or a gorgeous suit for a man. Finally, with all our garments in place, we can now add the best bits, the scarf, the jewellery, the matching shoes and bag, and for a man, the scarf, the leather shoes. Love binds it all together. To live, love lifts us above ourselves and makes us capable of making sacrifices. This week particularly, let us carefully contemplate what garments we shall be putting on for the new me, for the new us. Less concerned with ourselves, less headstrong, more submissive to God. Let us be resplendent in the right garments this week so that it truly will be holy week. Amen. And I hope you have a super week. Please do stay safe in this very bad weather.